this morning I'm stopping at Grandma's K&I Diner before I head out of town. I can't wait to get a hot cup of coffee because it's pretty cold. The Wibbles and Shadows are killer. I'm smashing those first. All right, biscuits and gravy time. Let's go. So I think that most of my followers are actually from New Mexico. But if you're from a different state, um, please start sending me recommendations now. I'm terrified that when I get out there, there's not going to be... I'm a diner guy, right? So send me recommendations for that. But I'm so scared that there's not going to be food <laughs> like like Huevos Ranchados. I'm telling you guys. So the price to flavor ratio on Huevos Ranchados is unmatched. You, you spend 10 bucks and your mouth is just punched with flavor and chili and all this other stuff. So I'm scared that when I finish the van out and I start traveling to other states, I'm gonna miss food from here. So please send me recommendations. I guess there's a little like municipal airport back here, but I saw this jet from the freeway. It says Lockheed T-33, second place trainer version of the F-80, top speed 600 miles an hour. Uh, it could fly for 1,274 miles. Its first flight was in 1948. And this aircraft was flown by Joe Kittinger, legendary test pilot, also known as Shooting Star T-Bird. So apparently that was America's first production jet. So I was down here last week. I didn't see it, but today I just happened to be looking over and uh, caught a glimpse of it. So pretty cool. Arriving in the silver mining boom town of Kingston in 1886, Sadie Jane Creech Orchard was arguably the most colorful woman in New Mexico history. Sadie opened brothels, worked as a prostitute, built and operated hotels, restaurants, and co-owned and drove for a regional stage line coach. This is the city or town or ghost town of Hillsboro's very first ever fire truck. So I found this tiny little town. I didn't even know that it was here. Um, it's called Hillsboro, and you know, I'm driving through and there's like a little park that you can stop at and uh, they have like this little historical district. It's not open today, um, you know. Most things in towns like this aren't open during the week. It's, it's a lot of the time it's uh, only gonna be open on the weekends, but there's a little park and then a little trail that leads you to some running water. And man, I just came down here and take a little break from driving a bit in the truck for like three hours and uh, Recharge my batteries a little bit. I'll give you guys some me not talking of this. This water is actually super clear. Cold. I bet I could drink it actually. That's how clear it is. First time seeing pigs? What is that? Pigs? Capybaras? What are those guys? They're all running away from me. See those guys? It was definitely like a gang of little pigs just rolling around. That's pretty cool. It's a really nice scenic viewpoint that they have. I'm on like the last leg. It's a mission to get out here though, so quite a bit of driving uh, to get out here today. This has been on my list for a really long time, so I'm happy that I'm getting to see it. Um, but uh, I'm getting tired of driving, so I'm glad that I'm almost there, but you can't beat that view. So I finally made it to my campground. Um, I have a ton of exploring to do here, but it's nice because I'm only that far away from the river, and that's what I'm going to be hearing all night is the running water, so that's really, really cool. I didn't do any research to see if there's any fish in here, but I would assume that there would be, so I may do some fishing. There's like an abandoned building across the river, but I don't think I can get to it because the bridge is uh, closed. It's private use only, it says. It says breathe. That is relaxing. Again.
Liver King would be proud of me right now for having a primal bath. <laughs> um, but on a serious note, like, uh, I don't know, there's something about this water that, one, it's hot, it feels good. Um, but I had a headache because I had been driving, gone. You know, my back was a little bit stiff, not stiff anymore. Um, I've been in it for probably like a good 30 minutes and uh, oh, it feels so good. Started to get all pruned up. So I was like, all right, I guess, I guess I better get out. But man, I hung out on that thing for a while and it was very relaxing, very nice. You know, you see the backdrop behind me. So we're right at the base of this like cliff and uh, oh, just the energy out here is just phenomenal. Um, they do have a, like a lodge if you are not into tent camping or vehicle camping or whatever the situation is. Um, and if you're going to come out here, I would recommend two days just because, especially from like Albuquerque where I'm from, if you're close, yeah, that's different, but it, it's quite the trip out here. So you got to make that trip. And then uh, I would plan on two days. So you can stay at the lodge or there's plenty of camping around here. You guys can definitely camp around here too. But um, I don't know if any of the other camping beats this experience. It's only 10 bucks for a site here. Um, you just have to email them and, and see if there's any spots because they only have 11. But since it's winter right now, it's cold at night. It's only like 20 degrees at night. I had no problem getting a, getting a spot. So right now it's actually not even that cold. It's December 1st. And you would think that out here, you know, you're up in the mountains and everything. It would be super, super cold. But it's really not even that bad, which is nice you know what i mean you can't beat that and you'd think since i was in the water that i'd be really really cold but not really so what's for dinner tonight bam a genuine military grade mre so i have a buddy in the military he sent me this mre so i could try it on camera um, I've never had like an official mre before i'm very excited to give this a shot and uh, see what our boys in the military are eating. This is menu 24, Southwest style beef and black beans. So, it says a peelable seal. My understanding is this is everything you need, right? You don't need any kind of heating apparatus. You don't need forks or spoons. Everything should be in here. A little tough to open. Does that not say peelable seal? Ah. Oh, there we go. I got it finally. That thing, I'll tell you what, after a long day of like battling or fighting or being out wherever you're at when you're in the military, I would be really mad if I had to open that at the end of the day. So anyway, that's what we got right here. Do not overfill. Comes in another bag, so it's a bag and a bag. So I gotta open this one. Much easier, much, much easier. Just kind of check out the contents here. This is this is the Southwest style beef and black beans in this packet. That is about it's about the size of my phone screen there. So I don't know if that's all the the beef and black beans or oh this is cool. This is mocha cappuccino instant powder. Directions, allow water just chemically purified to stand 30 minutes before adding to the cappuccino powder. Open zipper, add six ounces of hot or cold water. Fill to line, close zipper, shake to mix about 60 seconds. So you do need hot water here with that. So if they don't have a way to make hot water out there, they're kind of screwed. Beef stick, okay, here it is, spoon. I was wondering about that. I was wondering if you were gonna need some sort of apparatus. Good old fashioned cheese spread. So I'm assuming that's a lot like, you know, cheese whiz, cheese in a can sort of stuff. I'm hoping it tastes close to that. Chipotle tortillas. Tortillas? Chipotle tortillas or tortilla chips? It says tortillas. Apple pieces in spice sauce. So you get a little bit of dessert. applesauce pound cake you get gum two packets of gum a moist towelette i guess something to light iodized salt 
and cranberry grape uh, drink mix. And this right here is how you heat it up. So let me check this out really quick. So they have the nutrition content for the Southwest style beef and black beans. That's it right there. So that's 260 calories, pound cake, 290 calories, beef stick, 100 calories, apple pieces and spice sauce, 150 calories, tortillas, chipotle, um, 220 calories, cheese spread, 120 calories, and instant cocoa powder, 120 calories. So it's 1,260 calories when it's all said and done. Um, I'm gonna get my apparatus out to cook some water, to heat up some water. I didn't think that you were gonna need it with this, um, but I wanna have hot cocoa, obviously. I don't know. So I was under the impression that you didn't need anything extra at all in an MRE, but I guess they assume that they'll be able to heat up some water out there. Um, you know, I know the food heats up itself, but that kind of sucks. Like if you're out there and you don't have a way to heat up your water, I guess you start a fire. I don't know how the military works. All right, so while my water is kind of going, I'm gonna figure out the instructions on this and get everything heated up. Look at these instructions. It says rock or something. Another damn thing that you have to tear. Okay, so you tear there to use the bag. You actually have to pour a little bit of water into this bag. Do that. Okay, so it says to hold it level until you feel the MRE getting warm. Well, I mean, it's getting warm, so it is working. So I guess I'm gonna go find a rock or something to put it on. That thing actually started getting hot, hot, like bubbling and stuff. So this right here is either some sort of fire starter or toilet paper in the MRE. At this point in time, while I'm waiting for that other part to heat up, um, I'm trying to think like, what do you, the cheese spread? You eat it with the beef stick maybe and the tortillas? I, I don't really understand what the cheese spread's for, but I'm gonna try everything that came in this. So when they ch say cheese spread, I mean, it's it's cheese in a packet. Let's see what this uh, beef stick is about here. It comes wrapped in a packet wrapped in a packet, which I understand these MREs are definitely designed, you know, you don't refrigerate anything. This is teriyaki, by the way. You don't refrigerate anything. They're designed to last a long time. That's why everything is double wrapped. But this one container is producing copious amounts of plastic. Just a ton of plastic waste. So let's go for the, uh, the good old beef stick in the cheese dip there. I don't know. I feel like this thing, it's like a Jack Link's one, right? They have those at like gas stations wrapped in plastic. This is not bad. This tastes just like that. So if you like those, you'd actually like this part. Not actually not bad at all. This might be one of the things they look forward to the most. It is starting to get a little bit cold and it seems like my water's about ready for the hot chocolate. So, and I'm gonna do it the way that they would have to by adding water actually to this package instead of adding it to my cup. I think I may have made this a little bit thin, but it says to put it in there, shake it up and consume promptly within one hour of making. So this right here is another 120 calories. So, so far I've had the beef stick. I think I already threw that package away. It's like hundred and some odd calories. I haven't finished the cheese stuff completely yet. So the MRE itself does take 10 to 15 minutes, but you can see, let's see if I can get some steam to come out of the bag for you guys. It is warm in there. It is warming up. 
So the hot chocolate is making a weird noise. I, I, you guys won't be able to hear it. The camera's not that sensitive, but it's uh, sizzling. The hot chocolate is sizzling, which is a little strange. Flavor's not bad. I thinned it out too much. That's probably my fault for thinning it out too much, but it's not too bad. This has 16 grams of sugar in it, this one packet of hot chocolate. There is a zipper on the packet of hot chocolate, so you can seal it up. Uh, but, you know, it won't stand anywhere, which is a little tough for a drink. I'm losing some light, but I want to get through this. So, Chipotle tortillas. I was going to have these with the MRE itself, but I might as well just try... It says tortillas. Maybe there's two. So I can have one with the black beans and beef and one with itself, but... They are actual tortillas, Chipotle tortillas, and there is two. Um, they clearly, <laughs> they're a little bit rubbery. I mean, I get the flavor. I feel like there's like a Lunchable or something along those lines that provides a flavor. Taco Lunchables? Was that a thing? I guess the Chipotle flavor is like taco seasoning. Not the worst. I'm going to wait to have those, though, with the MRE and see if that makes it better. Or here's maybe a thing. Maybe try to get some of this cheese dip and see if this is a thing that somebody in their right mind would do. Like, there's even a little piece of beef stick stuck in there not bad with the tortilla okay so the main course should be ready by now take it out it's gonna be it's actually pretty hot the packet itself it's actually very very warm So that in itself is good, right? At least they're getting hot food. Keep kneading it. It says to knead the packet in order to ensure thorough heat. So this right here is the main meal. So the Southwest style beef and beans. I'm going to have, God, these tortillas, they just rip. They just, they seriously just rip. I mean, you're not... You're not going to be able to do much in terms of eating this stuff with them. It's like a, uh, kind of like a beef stew. But that's why, guaranteed, that's why they throw everything else in there. Why you get a beef stick, cheese, two desserts, hot chocolate, because this would not be enough calories. It's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, it, it. I think they're trying to pack quite a bit of flavor. And I would assume that's like a, uh, that's kind of like a morale thing. Trying to make sure that everybody gets plenty and plenty of flavor while they're out there. try the drink really quick. Not bad. That tastes like Kool-Aid. So I think I'm going to start dessert with the uh, applesauce pound cake. Comes with a silica gel packet attached to the bottom. Kind of have to peel it off of there, but applesauce pound cake. It tastes like uh, a lot of cinnamon in there. 
I was gonna describe it like it tastes like those scented pine cones. But like, you know how those smell? Like that's how strong the cinnamon is. Very strong cinnamon flavor, um, kind of dry, but not that bad. And then we have apple pieces and spice sauce, which I saved for last because I actually like this kind of apple a lot. This kind of apple that goes in like a apple pie. So I saved this for last because I was most forward looking or looking forward most to eating this. You can't English. I'm not happy. <laughs> um, they're okay. Maybe I could have like thrown this in the bag to heat them up because they're cold. Flavor wise, there's just something off about them. But yeah. Finish these and that's it. So I'm eating everything that came in the package. I'm not even done eating and my stomach is kind of hurting and I don't know if that's normal, but we'll find out. So I ate everything except for, they have a packet of salt in there and I don't understand what you would need a packet of salt for because there's already an insane amount of sodium in one of these things. Anyway, excuse me. So two pieces of gum, that's what's left. Worst gum ever. We started chewing it. I hate it. It's awful. This gum is like if it was trying to be mint. Like it really wanted to be mint. The good thing is you can put all of your trash back in the package that it came in. Um, but this does produce a lot, a lot of plastic. A lot of trash. A lot of waste. But not bad. I might try to get some more of these and then take them backpacking or something. It was really pretty enjoyable. I mean for what it is, it wasn't that bad. All nice and tucked in. It's getting cold out there. I was hanging out for a little bit, but it got real cold real fast. So this is another night where, where I'm at, I don't have service, which is not like the worst thing in the world, right? It's probably good for me to get off of the internet for a little bit and kind of away from that kind of stuff. I've noticed, you know, with me trying to make you know, make these YouTube videos and, uh, I'm trying to grow on Instagram as well. If you guys don't follow me over there, follow me. What's up with James, but I have little underscores as spaces. You guys can follow me there as well. Um, but with trying to make these videos, I'm constantly checking analytics. Did I grow? Did I get another view, another like, and like, I want to get away from that because the most rewarding part of me doing these videos is when I get comments that are like, James, I really enjoyed your video. My dad used to take me there and it brought back a lot of memories or James, my husband would have loved your videos. He died a few years ago, whatever the situation is. And I've received comments like that. They're so heartwarming and they mean so much to me. So I want to get away from checking my analytics so much as, and get more into like providing that, that good content. I want to make good content. Of course I do. Of course I want to grow, you know, all that other stuff. Like my heart's always there to make good content. But I really like to make stuff that resonates with you guys. And I like to show you guys new places, maybe things you've never done. And uh, that's really what means the most to me. So um, I'm going to go to bed, get all nice and warm and tucked in. And I'll see you guys for the Gila Cliff Dwellings in the morning. That should be a really fun trip. I'm going to hike around there for a little bit. And then i got a long, long drive back. I haven't decided if I'm going to go all the way back home yet. Um, and uh, if I do, it'll be like a long haul. Today was a kind of slower. It took me like six, seven hours to get down here. And I just, I don't want to do that tomorrow after hiking and everything. Um, but yeah, that's why I think that this should really be a two night thing for sure. If you guys are going to come do this, but anyway, that's enough of my pre-bed ramblings. I will see you guys in the morning. Morning guys. So I got my water going for my breakfast. Um, so I'm just going to eat one of these breakfast skillets and then head up the road. Um, they open in about an hour. I'm super excited to see these. These are uh, all the pictures I've seen. These look super, super cool. So I'm like really happy for today. So this is really cool. On your way up, they have this site. There's a little site here. You can kind of stop and read some information about, you know, what you're about to go see. So like that's the river's the reason. That's why people were here. They're saying the year was like 200 to 1300 CE when all this stuff was built up here. And this kind of shows some other stuff. So I am here just a little bit early. 
um but the the trail to the cliff dwellings is actually closed but they have these other trails so i'm gonna go check these ones out i'm gonna go see grudging's grave i think is the one i'm gonna go look for this is a wolf reintroduction area there are cougars good to know Man, these mountains are really, really nice. This wilderness is amazing. I thought the trail was going to dead end in the river. I was like, I'm not crossing it. It is cold, but it looks like it actually goes up and around. Hopefully. I started kind of climbing this, and I'm starting to actually think maybe not. I think the trail is supposed to go across the river maybe right there but that doesn't look quite right to me i'm gonna wait for one of the rangers to get here to ask him about that trail to see if i have to actually cross the river um to get to that grave uh when they get here though they should be opening up the gate so i'll head up to the cliff dwellings first that's like uh it's only like a mile trail but there's like like 300 and something steps i'll have to reread the sign um but uh i gotta wait for about 15 minutes i'm always early i'm always always early earlier than everybody else so I don't know where this water's coming from, but I thought that this was kind of a cool picture. Something cool to see. So it turns out you do have to cross the river to get to that, uh, the grave site, Grudging's Grave, I think it was called. So I'll think about that after I do this, after it warms up a little bit, cause I don't really want to get my feet wet when it's like 22 degrees outside. So, um, but I'll think about that when I come back down. All right, let's do this. So the uh, ranger was telling me, she was saying that this spring has been running ever since the Mogollon people were up here creating this. So you're talking about thousands of years of basically life this spring providing. That's the water they were drinking. kind of interesting there's like three three cutbacks so far where you just kind of go they built this bridge over the spring got another one coming up so far the hike is pretty easy but there are a lot of stairs at the top from what i was reading and what she told me be kind of cool if uh in the future there was a, a way you know better than the video to essentially put you guys here because this is such a cool place it's a a really special area with some really really just gorgeous scenery the sound of the water and everything and i try my best with these videos but man i wish i could take you from where you're at watching this and just drop you right here i'm starting to get close you guys can see that would be probably the first one i'm gonna run into so here's some more stairs there's been like a couple flights of stairs um but not this many in a row yet. It's not the worst to climb these, but keep that in mind if you guys are gonna head out here. You will be climbing stairs. I have seen plenty of benches though along the trail, so there's always a spot to kind of stop and rest after anything challenging. So these are actually original steps coming up to this would have been a room there's not a whole lot left of the walls
I cannot even imagine what it must have been like trying to build this stuff, carrying all of these rocks, wood beams and everything. I was out of breath climbing the, climbing the hills over there. So I mean, you really start to think about that. Like that's, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty, pretty cool what these people did. So at this point too, they actually allow you to go into the dwellings. I think that's a room. They had some stuff built in there. Man, this is really, really cool. So they have a bench right here. You can kind of sit here and take in that view right there and then you can also take in that one so I can't quite make it out maybe right there May maybe but there's a uh, it says that there's a mural on this wall and some people symbolize this let's see where is it similar designs to symbolize rain or clouds I can't quite see it, but obviously, I mean, it's faded. You know, you're talking about a painting that's 700 years old, so it makes sense that it would be faded by now. 700 year old view. I can't get in there, but I kind of wonder like what this small room would have been for, maybe like storage or something like that. And then they do let you actually climb these ladders. They just ask that you try not to touch the walls. That way you can get a view of what all of the rooms kind of looked like. I think there's an entrance there, but they have it blocked off, so you can't really walk in here, but you can get up and over and see it. Okay, so there's no way that's 700-year-old pieces of corn, right? All right, so I've reached the end of what you can check out in here. So you can go back either this via the stairs or there's actually a ladder right there. I think I'm gonna climb down that. Check that out really quick. Seems pretty cool. So I can actually see the parking lot already. A couple of them. 
let's see there's like one of the bridges that you come in on so you come in on the trail down there by the spring and then you exit along the cliff base there's a feeling associated with coming to a place like this that I can't describe. But I took a few moments up there inside the caves and I just sat there. And luckily I'm the only one up here. There was somebody finally catching up to me, but for the most part, I'm the only one up here. And uh, I just sat there and I had that feeling of connection with what was there, the past, and also earth. And uh, there's a feeling there that you cannot, you can't describe it. And you definitely, you cannot duplicate it without experiencing it. So this hike, it's about a mile long all the way around. There are stairs, um, but I don't think you have to be in the best shape if you're not in great shape or you know you have other health issues or whatever i do believe you can do this if you take it slow you know you take it one step at a time and uh i would encourage you to get out here and experience something like this like i said where i stayed last night there's a lodge you know you can rent a cabin down the road at the lake the lake's like a mile or an hour away from here so you can rent a cabin you can rent a room you don't have to sleep in your truck you don't have to sleep in a tent um come out here and see this i just passed a sign hold on it's a sign about the fire how it's actually healthy to have fires For a variety of reasons, Mogollon families walked away from the cave dwellings in the early 1300s. Though the culture is gone, the story carries on through the descendants who are still here. Modern Pueblo peoples trace their ancestry to the Mogollon through shared traditions, pottery designs, and beliefs. Our ancestors are still alive. They did not go anywhere. They did not disappear. We're still here. There's 616 steps total. So it has warmed up a little bit, so I'm going to go try to find that that grave. I think I got to go right there. That's what would make the most sense to me. Um, so yeah, here we go. Okay, never mind. So I was trying to cross right there, and then I would have had to cross again. I see footprints down there, um, but I climbed up to this vantage point. There is a little path worn right here. Just like a sketchy path and i don't know if it's the right one but i'm gonna take it the river's not that deep but ankle deep and cold i really just don't want it in my boots like so i'm trying this this is a sketchy path though this is not something i recommend doing so this is not marked super well at all but this looks like a path to me i'm gonna follow it give myself like 30 minutes to find this grave and if i don't find it by then and I'm out. So there's no sign <laughs> for this grudging's grave. So while the cliff dwellings are half a mile, it said the grave was a mile. Um, TJ Corral, that's not it. I'm not hiking 11 and three quarters to Hell's Hole, although I would love to see that. That's for a different day. Um... I don't know if Grudgeon's Grave is a half mile that way or a half mile that way. No sign, but I'm going to go this way and see. Um, yeah, I'm not prepared for 11 and three quarter mile hike. I can do that, uh, but I have to be prepared for that. Like, I have to come out here to do that. It does give me a cool idea, though, because technically at those signs, I'm outside of the National Park area and I'm in the wilderness area which is open to camping. So I am planning on putting together a backpack for backpacking. And uh, I might just have to come back out here and backpack to the Hell's Hole. Looks like somebody has actually even stayed right here before. 
So this sign, I have hiked a mile and a half out. It's telling me the cliff dwellings are a mile and a half from the way that I have come, which means that I've hiked a full mile from the fork, which means that I need to hike a mile back and then try the direction towards, uh, what was it, TJ's Corral to see if I can find this grape. So about two minutes ago, I was like, mm, I think I should turn around. And then I saw the sign and I was like, well, let's see what that sign says. So. All it is is extra steps though, uh, you know, it was a 50-50 shot, I think, hopefully on those trails. Um, nothing out here is marked very well though, so I'm gonna go a mile that way, and then a mile, or half a mile, the other way. Some really nice scenery to walk through here though. We got like the mountain on the side of me, but I'm in this valley, and the river's to the left of me. All right, back at the sign. Let's hope that the grave is that way. It's not like the biggest deal if I don't find it. I just wanted to see it. Um, but out here, there's no service. I have not had service since yesterday. So I can't just Google where it is. Um, and not, nothing's really marked very well. I don't know, guys. I'm conceding defeat on that, uh, the dang grave. Um, I'm like... At least 20 minutes past the time that I allotted for myself to look for it. And I've got at least, if not more than 20 minutes to go back. It's not a mile down either one of those trails at the fork. Um, so I really don't know where it could be. Like, when I get out of here, I'm going to Google it so I know where it's at the next time I come down here. But, can't find it today. So, anyway, heading back now. I don't know it says it's only a mile that way and i went way that way and uh didn't find it so maybe next time i'll google where it's at big old crow sitting on my truck that guy's huge how close can i get yeah i don't know i don't know why i couldn't find it but after all that hiking i feel like i earned a sparkling water so cheers guys driving out now. We'll see if there's anything to explore on the way out. Otherwise, it's just like a six hour drive home. So that's such a long way back. I decided I'm just going to take my time really and give myself like, I don't know, 20, 30 casts right here. See if I can't pull something up. No luck. If you guys have followed my channel for a little while, you know that uh, that's not a surprise. I'm not trying real hard either, so I wasn't going to spend too, too much time here, but I saw it and I was like, let me pull over and stop, get out of the truck. So I can't wait till I'm in the van and like I, I'm in it full time because then I can just stop wherever. And it's like, yeah, if it took me three days to get out here, it wouldn't matter. You know what I mean? That it took me three days. It's just that's how long it takes. And that's, you know, I stop wherever I want and do whatever I want. I want to manifest it. It's going to happen. And I'm going to take you guys with me. So this is the, uh, the old bridge. This is actually national historic places, but I stopped to check it out. What I want to know is how these people are able to get their graffiti underneath the bridge like that. Like how how anyway on the other side this is a really really beautiful view from this bridge this guy's only charging five cents the doctor's in i like how you can ring a little bell for service my cruise control has stopped working which is definitely like some haterade when i'm on the highway so i'm gonna check it out really quick i believe that this goes like that. That probably needs to be tightened or something. 
Um, but let's see if that fixes my problem. I'm not a mechanic, and this truck just hit, uh, on this trip, I just crossed 190,000 miles. Yeah, so I'm at 190, 236, but the cruise control is working again. I'm editing my video, I forgot to sign off again. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys, like, a lot, a lot. And uh, I'll see you guys next week.